This lecture presents the static flow analysis capability provided by the GNAT Prove tool through the support of Spark 2014. Flow analysis concentrates primarily on variables and how information flows through them during a subprogram's execution, linking the final value of a variable to its initial value. It also takes into account global variables declared at library level as well as local variables defined inside subprograms and formal parameters. For a nested subprogram, we call scope variables those that are declared locally to an enclosing unit. Scope variables really are global variables from the nested subprogram's point of view. Flow analysis is usually fast, it takes approximately the same time as compilation. It also permits the detection of kinds of errors, errors as well as violations of some Spark requirements, including the absence of aliasing and side effect freedom expressions. Note that flow analysis is sound, meaning if it does not detect any errors of a supported kind, then it is guaranteed that there are no errors. We will now present each class of error which can be detected by flow analysis starting with reading an uninitialized variable which is nearly always an error. It introduces non-determinism and breaks the type system as the value of an uninitialized variable may be outside that of its subtypes range. For these reasons GNAT Prove has resorted to requiring every red variable to be initialized. Flow analysis is responsible for ensuring that this requirement is always fulfilled by Spark code. For example, in the function max array shown on this slide, we have forgotten to initialize the value of max prior to entering the loop. As a consequence, the value read in the condition of the if statement may be uninitialized. Flow analysis will detect and report this kind of error. Ineffective statements are different from dead code as they are executed, even usually modifying the value of variables. Only, they have no effect on any of the subprogram's outputs, be they parameters, global variables, or function results. Ineffective statements, like unused variables, should be avoided, as they make the code less readable and more difficult to maintain. What is more, they are often caused by errors in the program, which may be difficult to detect. It is the case in the subprograms swap1 and swap2 shown on this slide which do not properly swap their two parameters x and y. Though they are not considered as errors in themselves, flow analysis warns both on ineffective statements and unused variables. Parameter modes influence the behavior of the compiler and are a key point for documenting the usage of a subprogram. Flow analysis will check that specified parameter modes always correspond to their usage in the subprogram's body. More precisely, it will check that an in parameter is never updated either directly or through a subsequent subprogram call. It will also check that the initial value of an out parameter will never be read in the subprogram as it may not be copied on subprogram entry. Finally, Flow analysis will also warn when an in-out parameter is not updated or when its initial value is not used in the subprogram, as it may be the sign of an error. An example of this is shown on the slide in the subprogram called swap. Note that in Spark, a parameter which is not read but not updated on every path should be declared as an in-out as its final value may depend on its initial value. Until now, we have seen verifications which do not require any additional annotations from the developer. Flow analysis will also check user written flow annotations when supplied. In Spark, it is possible to specify the global and scoped variables accessed or modified by a subprogram. This is done using an ADA 2012 like contract named Global. When a global contract is supplied by the user for a subprogram, flow analysis will check that it is correct and complete, that is, no other variable than those stated in the contract are accessed or modified either directly 
or through a subsequent subprogram subcall. For example, we may want to specify that the function getValue of x shown here reads the value of the global variable x and does not access any other global variable. Global contracts are provided as part of the subprogram specification. Indeed, they provide useful information to any users of the subprogram. The value specified for the global aspect is an aggregate like list of global variables' names grouped together depending on their mode. For example, as shown here, the procedure set x to y plus z reads both y and z listed as input and updates x listed as output. As set x to x plus y both updates x and reads its initial value, x's mode is in out. Like for parameters, if no mode is specified, then the default is input. That is the case in the declaration of get value of x. Finally, if a subprogram like incra parameter x does not reference any global variables, the value of the global contract should be set to null. A user may also supply a depends contract for a subprogram to specify dependencies between its outputs and its inputs. Here, not only global variables are considered, but also parameters and function results. When a depends contract is supplied for a subprogram, flow analysis checks that it is correct and complete, that is, that each subprogram output is related to all of its inputs. For example, a user may want to check that, on return of swap, as shown here, each parameter only depends on the initial value of the other parameter, or that the value of x on return of set x to zero does not depend on any global variable. Like global contracts, depend contracts are specified on subprogram declarations using aspects. Its value is a list of one or more dependency relations between outputs and inputs to the program. Each such relation is represented as two lists of variable names separated by an arrow. At the left of the arrow are the variables whose final value depends on the initial value of the variables on the right. For example, the final value of each parameter of the swap subprogram -pro shown here only depends on the initial value of the other parameter. If the subprogram is a function, its result must be listed as an output, as we did for get value of x, shown here. It is often the case that the final value of a variable depends on its own initial value. This can be specified in a concise way using the plus character, like shown here in the specification of set x to x plus y. Note that if there are more than one variable on the left of the arrow, a plus means that each variable depends on itself, and not that they all depend on each other. It can also be the case that an input is not used to compute the final value of an output. This can be expressed by putting null at the left of the dependency relation, like we have shown here for the do nothing subprogram. Note that there can only be one such dependency relation, listing all the unused inputs of the subprogram and that it must be declared last. Also note that such an annotation will silence flow analysis's warning about unused parameters. Finally, null can be used at the right of a dependency relation to state that an output depends on no input. That is the case for the procedure set x to zero, as shown here. Flow analysis is sound analysis which means that if it does not output any message on some analyzed Spark code, then none of the supported errors may occur in that code. On the other hand, there are cases where flow analysis will issue a message where there are in fact no errors. The first and maybe most common reason for this has to do with modularity. To improve efficiency on large projects, verifications are in general performed on a per subprogram basis. It is in particular the case for detection of uninitialized variables. For this detection to be done modularly, flow analysis needs to assume initialization of inputs on subprogram entry 
and initialization of outputs after subprogram execution. Therefore, every time a subprogram is called, Flow Analysis will check that global and param parameter inputs are initialized, and every time a subprogram returns, it will check that global and parameter outputs are also initialized. This may lead to messages being issued on perfectly correct subprograms, like shown here, for set x to y plus z, which only sets its output parameter x when overflow is false. This simply means that, in that case, flow analysis was not able to verify that no uninitialized variable could be read. To solve this problem, x can either be set to a dummy value when there is an overflow, or the user can verify by their own means that x is never used after a call to set x to y plus z if overflow is true. Another common cause for false alarms is the way composite types are handled in flow analysis. Let's first look at arrays in particular. In flow analysis, array objects are treated as single entire objects, meaning that an update to an element of the array is handled as an update of the entire array object. Obviously, this makes reasoning about global variables access and dependencies less precise, but it also affects detection of reads of uninitialized variables. Indeed, it is often impossible for flow analysis to decide if the entire object has been initialized, and if so, even in really simple cases. For example, after initializing every element of an unconstrained array A with zero in a loop, as shown here, we may still have a flow message stating that the array is not initialized. To solve this issue, a user can either use an aggregate assignment or, if it is not possible, verify initialization of the object by other means. Flow analysis is more precise on record objects in the sense that it tracks separately the value of each component inside a single subprogram. As a consequence, when a record object is initialized by successive assignments of its components, flow analysis can make sure that the whole object is initialized. Note that record objects are still treated as entire objects when taken as inputs or outputs to subprograms. For example, Using a procedure call to initialize only some of the components of a record object will result in a flow analysis complaining about non-initialization of to be initialized components in entry of the subprogram. This is demonstrated in the init underscore f2 subprogram shown on this slide. It is also worth noting that flow analysis is not value dependent in the sense that it never reasons about values of expressions. As a consequence, if some path of execution in the subprogram are impossible due to values of expressions, it will still consider them feasible and therefore may emit unnecessary messages concerning them. On the left hand side of this slide, there is a version of the absolute value subprogram. Flow analysis computes that on a path entering none of the two conditional statements R is uninitialized. As it does not consider values of expressions, it cannot know that such a case can never happen. To avoid this problem, it is better to make the control flow explicit, as in the right hand version of the absolute value subprogram. Finally, unexpected flow messages may come from inaccuracies in flow contract computations. So why does flow analysis compute contracts? As we have explained earlier, both global and depends contracts are optional, but GNAP proof still needs them for some of its analysis. For example, knowing the set of global variables accessed by a subprogram is necessary for detecting the use of uninitialized variables. As for depend contracts on a subprogram, they are necessary to be able to check user to supplied dependency contracts on callers of this subprogram. As each flow contract on a subprogram depends on the flow contracts of all the subprograms called inside its body, this computation can easily be quite time consuming. Therefore, flow analysis sometimes trades off precision of this computation for efficiency. 
That is in particular the case for dependence contracts, for which flow analysis simply assumes the worst. It assumes that each subprogram output depends on all of the subprogram's inputs. To solve this issue, it is enough to manually supply contracts when computed ones are not precise enough. Note that supplying global contracts may also be a good idea to speed up flow analysis on larger projects in general. Here is the answer to the question. Please click anywhere inside the slide when you are ready to continue. Here is the answer to the question. Please click anywhere inside the slide when you are ready to continue. Here is the answer to the question. Please click anywhere inside the slide when you are ready to continue. Here is the answer to the question. Please click anywhere inside the slide when you are ready to continue. Here is the answer to the question. Please click anywhere inside the slide when you are ready to continue. Here is the answer to the question. Please click anywhere inside the slide when you are ready to continue. Here is the answer to the question. Please click anywhere inside the slide when you are ready to continue. Here is the answer to the question. Please click anywhere inside the slide when you are ready to continue. Here is the answer to the question. Please click anywhere inside the slide when you are ready to continue. Here is the answer to the question. Please click anywhere inside the slide when you are ready to continue. 